Uh, 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 oh my god, do you have COVID? Why are you wearing that suit? What? Oh, this? I I don't know. I just wear it around because, like, germs. What's COVID? Haven't you noticed that the world ended, like, six months ago with this pandemic? No! I'm an introvert. I haven't left my house all, all summer. Oh, do you hear about uh, that disorderly goat who destroyed a cop car last week? Yeah, he's a total goat apocalypse. At least you're not talking about it anymore. True. Hello, and welcome back to The Real Deal, Ball State's premier entertainment news show. I'm your host, Marcos Carranza. And I'm Nate Richard, and we're your new hosts for season 16. But COVID won't ruin our sweet 16. My mom just got me a tiara. Are you going to do that every five minutes? No, Nate, I'm going to do it every two minutes. Someone needs to stay on top of this. I feel like we're in the third act of a really bad Marvel movie. A lot of us are feeling that way too, Marcos. You know, in these trying times, we could really use a hero. And unfortunately, we lost one of our generation's most important heroes, Chadwick Boseman. He was the king of Wakanda, the king of baseball, and the king of our hearts. Mm -hmm. Andre is here with a special message in remembering the legacy of Chadwick Boseman. The emotional and psychological toll of 2020 due to being locked inside, an inept administration, wildfires, police brutality has made this year feel more like three. On top of, on top of all this, we lost a one-of-a-kind human being in Chadwick Boseman. The collective sadness we feel from this loss is added on by the fact that he was just 43 years old when he left this. And you, of course, know him from his iconic portrayal of King T'Challa in Marvel's mega-hit Black Panther, a film that has revolutionized the expectations of Black representation worldwide. A film that had finally placed a person of color in the forefront of a superhero film since probably Hancock. And telling the story of a, of a, of, of a, of a Black hero and no longer as a quirky sidekick. Uh, but Bozeman has had actually a long record of advancing the representation of black men specifically in Hollywood through through his multiple biopics. Uh, in the film 42, he played Jackie Robinson, the first black MLB player since 80, 1889. Uh, Bozeman was praised for the, the authenticity uh, of Robinson by, by Robinson's wife himself and who who faced belligerent racism throughout his entire time in the MLB. Uh, in Get On Up, Bozeman played James Brown. He's a, a, It's an absolutely wild biopic of the funk icon in which Bozeman performs a, the, a, the standout performance and highlight of the film. And in Marshall, he tells the story of Thurgood Marshall, which uh, of before he became the first black Supreme Court Church Justice. Marshall is truly a thrilling film and a breath of fresh air from the common white savior narratives. And the last film I'll uh, highlight is The Five Bloods. It's a, it's a newer film and uh, it's, it tells a story of uh, Vietnam vets re revisiting their demons uh, like some 50 years after the war in, in in 2019 and also lots and lots of gold it's uh, directed by spike lee and frankly this is easily my favorite film as of now every character in the film is beautifully fleshed out and 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 there's no there's no weak performances everything is stellar and the film is not afraid to be brutally blunt about the message it wants to get across and, and, and Bozeman shot that film all while fighting stage three cancer. 
So once again, 42, get on up, Marshall, The Five Bloods. Might be some films you uh, didn't know both, uh, you didn't know existed, uh, but nonetheless, Chadwick was amazing in all of them. And you should, should, you should give him a, uh, a shot. I think it's a it's a good way to to honor the the the, the work he's done. All right, this has been Andre. Thank you guys. Thank you, Andre, for the segment. We're all still grieving for the life of such an icon. It's really hard on all of us when an influential actor suddenly leaves our lives. The best we can all hope to do is just to keep on moving. Well, he might have the spicy news, but are you keeping up? With the Kardashians? No, COVID, their younger sister. She has her own mask line. She's like, I don't know, she's kind of a big deal. She the one who broke the internet? No, that was her mom, Karen. There are too many Kardashians to keep up with anymore. I know, but soon enough, they'll be off the air. Uh, what am I supposed to watch now? Or if you're looking for some new entertainment, Anastasia's got you covered, right, Anastasia? Thanks, Anastasia, and welcome back. I'm just sorry you're coming back during the apocalypse. I know we're going through some changes around the world, and especially here at The Real Deal. We're probably going to have some format changes, but we are dedicated to making sure that our content is the best that it can be for all of you. It's not about the COVID. It's about the friends you make along the way. How can we make friends when we're six feet apart? We can make friends at any distance, Nate. Oof. Well, on that strangely heartfelt note, we'll move on to our final word. Wow. My very own final word. This only ever happens to me in text chains. Now, of course, I'm kidding. I'm really glad to be back at my real deal home for season 16, even if it's not quite how we all imagined it. With the new season comes new opportunities, new friendships, and of course, new beginnings. Speaking of new beginnings, a new trailer for Disney Plus's show, The Mandalorian, came out this morning, which again brings to mind the hard moral decision I had to make to buy Disney Plus almost a year ago. I'm still not sure where I land on that. Anyway, the trailer seems to follow a darker tone, largely focused on Din, the titular character, and his mission to reunite the child, Baby Yoda, with his own kind. The trailer seems to allude to the story being a very dangerous mission. There are a few moments in the trailer that that focus on the evil sorcerers known as Jedi. With, it, with this, there's an image of a hooded figure who appears and then vanishes out of frame. Many have speculated that this character is played by WWE star Sasha Banks, but that has yet to be confirmed. Another fun moment in the trailer is when the child, aka the adorable baby Yoda, closes his own cradle to shield himself from blaster fire. This season looks to have many of the same awesome moments with some comedy thrown in once again. Overall, I'm really excited for the show's return, not only because I can now justify buying Disney Plus to myself, but, I also, but also because I think that the show is genuinely something very special. Season 2 of The Mandalorian begins streaming on October 30th on Disney Plus. Until then, be sure to turn in, tune into The Real Deal for all our coverage on entertainment news and The Mandalorian. I'm Marcos Carranza, shout out to Abby Perry, and that's my final word. So for my first ever final word, I want to talk about something super important. Timothy Chalamet and Sandworms. The trailer for Den Denis Villeneuve's Dune dropped last week and was filled with big stars, a Pink Floyd cover, and lots of sand. Over the past seven years, Denis Villeneuve has quickly become one of the most coveted directors in the business. He's directed films from the likes of Prisoners, Enemy, Sicario, Arrival, and Blade Runner 2049. And with Dune, he may have his biggest hit yet. The film has a loaded cast with everybody's favorite 20-something heartthrob, Timothy Chalamet, leading the way as Paul Atreides, alongside A-listers like Oscar Isaac, Zendaya, Jason Malmoa, Josh Brolin, Dave Bautista, Rebecca Ferguson, Javier Bardem, and Stellan Skarsgård. The trailer promises an epic scope in what looks to have the potential to be the next Lord of the Rings. Not only does this have the action, but it also looks to have the aura of a prestige picture, one with sandworms, might I add. Plus, it's all set to an even more dramatic cover of Pink Floyd's Eclipse, a nice touch as 
Alejandro Yurdokrovsky's canned adaptation of Dune back in the 70s was set to have the iconic band perform the score. Warner Brothers and Legendary seem to already have a lot of confidence in Dune, with the prequel spin-off series Dune the Sisterhood already in development at HBO Max, the team behind the first movie is already in the early stages of playing out a direct sequel. The film is currently slated to hit theaters in this, on December 18th of this year, but whether it actually stays on that day is another question altogether. We'll just have to wait and see. Regardless, I'm incredibly eager to see what this creative team has cooked up. Till next time, I'm Nate Richard. And I'm Marcos Carranza. This is the real deal.